Exercise 1, Modeling Earth as an Ellipsoid. So traditionally, the Earth's surface has been modeled as a sphere, but the World Geodetic uh, System of 1984 or WGS84 uses an ellipsoid as a more accurate model. It places the center of the Earth as the origin and the North Pole on the positive y-axis. The distance from the center to the poles is 6,356.523 uh, uh, kilometers, and a distance to a point on the equator is 6378137 uh, kilometers. All right, uh, so this question has multiple parts, and yeah, the, the first part is part A. Find an equation of the Earth's surface as used by WGS84, or the World Geodetic System of uh, 1984. And then uh, part B says, curves of equal latitude are traces in the planes Z equals to K. And what is the shape of these curves? And uh, then uh, last part, part C, meridians or curves of equal longitude uh, are traces in the planes of the form Y equals MX. So we have a line like that. What is the shape of these meridians? And then, uh, yeah, so let's just jump right in. So solution to part A, Earth's ellipsoid equation. So recall the equation of an ellipsoid. So, because we want an ellipsoid equation, this one uh, from table one. So x squared divided by a squared uh, plus y squared over b squared plus z squared over c squared equals one. And all traces are ellipses. And if a equals b equals c, the ellipsoid is a sphere. So we got to write it like that. So let's draw the shape of the Earth in 3D. And uh, we know the uh, basically the axis points are the uh, at the x-axis at the y and the, and the I mean at the z and the y based on the number c a b c like that. And uh, and also we know that uh, the distance right here is so a place the center of the Earth at the origin, and the North Pole is the Z axis. So then the distance from the center of the poles, um, if from the from the center to the the poles, the North and South is going to be six thousand three five six one two three, and the distance to a point on the equator is six three seven eight, like that. And I'm going to do is actually uh, no, we'll, we'll just write it down. Anyways, uh, so what this means is we're going to have a, a, a flattened uh, ellipsoid. It's going to look something like this. Let's just draw it a blob like that. And now this is going to be at this point. This is the X. This is the Y. And that's the Z. Like that. So then this is the Y. And at this point right here, this is going to be, well, 0 is X. And then uh, this is going to be the same for the X one. It's going to be 6, 3. 78.1370, like that. And uh, let's just see what it was. Yeah, 6378, uh, this is to the equator. And uh, and then this one right here, 6356.5.23, that's going to be at th this uh, vertical part. So this will be 0, 0, 6253.0. Point, um, no, actually, this is a 6 right here. 6, then 0.52. Three, like that, and if you go back up here, yeah, six three five six point five two three, and six three seven eight one three seven, and then uh, and then on at the equator, so any any point here, this is the also the equator. This is going to be, uh, this is also going to be the same as this uh, y one, but the x axis. So six three seven eight point one three seven, and then zero, and then zero, like that. And then if you trace this around, it's just going to be. Like that, dot, 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 go all the way across, like this, and so on. And then this is going down like this, down like this to the center of the Earth, and that's the origin. So it looks something like that. Yeah, so that, that's how the Earth looks like. And now to plug these in, because uh, we know that these values, just throw that in there. So this one will be C, and this A and B are the same. So recall that the parameters A, B, and C uh, of uh, an ellipsoid. Uh, represent the distance from the center to the edge of the uh, edge of the ellipsoid along the x, y, and z axis respectively. Uh, thus, we thus we have the equation uh, of the ellipsoid. Yeah, thus the equation of the ellipsoid is as follows, uh, and that's going to be x squared over a, which is going to be six three seven eight point one three seven, like like this squared, make this uh, neater, and then this is going to be plus y, it's going to be the same thing, 6378.137 squared, plus z squared equals to, this is going to be 6356.523 squared equals to 1. 
All right, yeah, so that's our equation of the Earth as an ellipsoid. So graphing in GeoGebra, so uh, we'll graph that out. So n and note first that we have to zoom out a lot to see the Earth because we're dealing with uh, 6,000 uh, uh, plus um, uh, kilometers there. So note that we have to zoom out to see a lot, a lot to see the Earth. So what I did was here, I wrote the point 6378 and 137, it rounds up as this, this, that's this point, and there's this point right here is, you know, that's the first point A. Point B is the y axis, and then we have the 6356. And it, it lines up right on this sphere that we uh, added over here. So let's go over to it. So this was right here. And so we're going to have the Earth. Yeah, so notice that if I showed it's not showing because I need to zoom out a whole lot. So we're going to zoom out. So notice <laughs> so this shows the scale of the Earth. So there's the axis all one, two, three. I got to keep going. Out, out until we see it. So this is 60, 100 kilometers, 120, 140. Still going. So we're in the uh, 400 range. Thousand. There's the Earth. So yes, absolutely massive. All right, there it is, and, the, and all the points match up exactly on this uh, sphere. And there is our equation that we put in right there. So that is uh, epic stuff there. So that's the Earth. All right, let's continue further. So let's look at the solution to part B. And part B asked, uh, curves of equal latitude are traces in the planes uh, Z equals K, and that's the horizontal. What is the shape of these curves? Well, if we cut it equal latitude, um, yeah, they cut it at Z equals K, we're going to get uh, circles, actually. So, so parallels or circular lines of equal latitude, so solution to part B. So note that latitude is the vertical angle, uh, we'll, we'll call this, uh, yeah, theta, and longitude, or phi, yeah, we'll call that phi, this is the vertical angle phi, in this case, and longitude is the horizontal angle, uh, this is lambda, from the center of the Earth. So if it's equal uh, latitude, it's going to be a giant circle like that. And then this is lambda, this is uh, this angle from here to here. Yeah, so then if we're going to have the same angle uh, everywhere across here to here, that's going to be these lines there. Those are the meridians, and that's going to be the ellipse, the vertical ellipse. So horizontal circles and a vertical ellipse, and we'll see that. So we can determine the curves of equal latitude by setting z equals k and finding the traces. So we have this equation, put z equals k and find the traces. And so let's just put that in. So we're going to get, yeah, we're going to get uh, z equals to k, and then we're going to get x squared over, this is just going to be 6378.137 squared plus y squared 6378.137 squared, and then this equals to, and move that over, so we're going to have 1 minus k squared over the 3, or 6356. So it's about uh, 22, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah about 22 kilometers uh, squ more squished than the um, equator. All right, so this is going to be uh, 523. Yeah, that's right, squared. So that's our equation. And this is 4. 4 uh, k uh, is going to be, well, the absolute value of k is less than, uh, yeah, just going to be less than 6356. Five, two, three. So that this, uh, so that this is, so that this right here is going to be uh, positive. So this lesson is always going to be positive. In other words, we're going to get a circle everywhere. And uh, yeah, so these traces are horizontal cir circles since the horizontal radii are identical. So there's a and and b that are identical, and that's going to be our uh, radius r. We can move it over to the other side. And and this one, depending on the value, we can divide it out and then move it over and get this uh, get the radius, which is going to be shifting. So graphing in GeoGebra. Uh, so note there's uh, some interesting stuff here. You can't just draw a circle in GeoGebra using uh, these equations because you're going to get a, actually a cone. <laughs> so gra graphing in GeoGebra, uh, so we have this uh, setup right here. So I put this and I also put k like this, and then z equals to k, and then I shifted it. So there's the equation, and I shifted it and see what happens. So let's go over it, to it. So I'm going to go, uh, so we have... A, B, C, so just remove those, or we can keep them, not a big deal. Now we have K, and then actually K, we don't need to draw it, all right. So now the, the issue is if you plug this in, you're going to get a cone, because it's in 3D, and in this graphing calculator, I can't put in a the Z equals K into it. 
So if I hide the uh, hide the earth, so we get a cone like that. So we just get a, a flat cone uh, like that that corresponds. Yes, yeah, so you can zoom in like that and go in. And uh, but so what's more important is actually just the z equals k, and I'll show you the other part. So you move this down, you're going to get circles everywhere. So that, that that shrink. So notice the trace. You can see that visually. So you can see visually is just a just a circle. And then the k value go down. So put this plane down, and you're going to get a circle like that. So that's pretty cool stuff. And then this cone corresponds to that circle. There. But it's a cone in 3D because uh, I don't know how to put a z equals k into the equation directly. But anyway, so I put a note there. So to graph the 2D circles, we need to use the Desmos 2D graphing calculator, or you could use a GeoGebra as well. Uh, oh, and actually, no, the GeoGebra. We can, we need to use the GeoGebra. Yeah, GeoGebra has uh, the setup uh, here. So if you go here, and then so the exact same equation, and now we'll have k equals zero, uh, and now this is going to be our uh, k there. Let's go here. I don't know why this is zero there. Oh, actually, I, oh, that's because it's set to it. I think it's set to it. Yeah, k equals zero. Yeah, so that's the k equals zero, and uh, that's going to be at the equator. And notice what happens here. So shrink it, goes bigger, shrink it. And this corresponds to these uh, setups right here. So notice how as k gets bigger, uh, you're going to get a smaller circle. So as k gets bigger, you get a smaller circle. Uh, this until you get the equator. And then you go below it. So there's the equator and then it goes back down. So that's pretty cool stuff. And there is our equation like that. And this is in 2D. Otherwise, you're going to get a cone. So that is quite amazing stuff. So uh, and again, note that changing the k value makes the circle smaller or bigger as they would appear in 3D, viewing vertically away from the poles or just uh, straight, out, straight on top or below. All right, that's pretty epic stuff. So now let's take a look at the solution to part C. And this is meridians or elliptical lines of equal longitude. And uh, we'll go and uh, look at the actual question. So this is uh, part C. So meridians, curves of equal longitude are traces in the planes of the, of the form y equals mx. What is the shape of these meridians? So let's uh, write that down then. So it's going to be y equals mx. So the meridians or lines of equal longitude can be determined by uh, setting y equals mx and finding the traces. Yeah, so if we do that, we'll, we'll just put y equals mx. And then this means the, that we're going to have x squared over the, the usual, just put the big giant number, 6378.137 squared. And then plus, well, the y is going to be mx, so that's just going to be, um, now let's put it for, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just square. So this will be our y. It's going to be mx squared. This is our y. This is going to be our my squared. I mean, mx squared, which is our y. Like that. All right, so we have that. And then this is going to be divided by, and it's the same thing, 6378.137, and then squared. And then this is going to be plus the z1. It's going to be 6356.523 squared equals to 1. All right, so now what we can do is, well, uh, just we could uh, factor out the like terms. Basically, we're going to have this whole part, this x squared over the radius, and uh, factor that out. So we're going to get, and, and then factor, we're going to get a 1 on this. This side is 1, and then plus m squared. And we're going to get an x squared over 6378.137 squared, and then plus, this is just going to be an ellipse, z squared. 5, 6, 5, 2, 3, So this is an ellipse, uh, and that's because, well, uh, these aren't going to be, uh, these aren't the same, and also this is going to be uh, changing based on whatever this m value is. So it's an ellipse that's variable, depending on the m value. All right, and uh, yeah, so these uh, traces are vertical ellipses, because this is a z squared, so basically y, uh, y equals mx plane, which is a vertical plane. Uh, since the horizontal and vertical radii are different, I just call them that. So this the horizontal is going to be different. It's going to be also further adjusted by this. And then this one here is different. And then graphing in GeoGebra, uh, what we're going to get is, uh, so we'll have this here. And so another issue is uh, if we just plug that in, we're not going to get, uh, I forgot the shape here, but I think it's going to be a possibly, yeah, it's going to be a horizontal cone actually. And uh, the MX, uh, what it actually do, just does is shifts the, uh, it just it goes in a circle. So it shifts the plane across it. So instead of going like this, Y equals uh, MX, 
So y equals one is going to be uh, flat, and then uh, I mean, uh, m if uh, m is one is going to be a perfectly forty five degree. But if m is let's say ten, it's going to go more uh, directly here. If it's a zero, I think it's going to be yeah. Well, y is going to the x is going to increase more. Uh, the y is going to increase less. That's going to look like, and you can have also negative as well to flip it. And we'll show that soon. So we have this, and it looks like this. We have uh, the y equals uh, m x plane. So this is the y equals m x plane and then it cuts it straight through you're gonna get these vertical ellipses so that's pretty uh, epic stuff so let's go and do that and there's a y, y equals mx and there's our uh, a one plus m x squared over six three seven eight point one three seven rounds up one four and so on uh our um ellipse so going here let's go we have to go to here and to do this we're going to hide this one now we're going to deal with uh, so if I plug this in, yeah, this is going to be a, uh, we already had the vertical uh, cone. So the next one's going to be y equals mx. Yeah, so here, if we plug this in, it's going to be actually an ellipse that's like shaped like that. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's going to be shaped like that. Let's see how this looks based on the values. Whoops. M value. Actually, yeah, it's going to be like two lines there. Cross again, uh, uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure how what's doing on the yeah, it's gonna be let's see here, yeah, it's gonna be a, a elliptical cone that's horizontal, and again, it depends on the shape. Uh, that's where you can have a uh, weird ellipse. If you're looking at it like this, you're gonna see a shape like that. Uh, but but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this 3D one, so show it here. So there, this is and then uh, zoom out. So this is a, a y equals mx plane. If you move this, it just rotates around. So notice it's rotating around. You're always going to get an ellipse. And but if you look at it from one side only, that's that's why this is a bit an issue. So if we look at it straight from here, and then show this cone. Let's see this uh, one right here. What does that look like? Whoops. Yeah, there it is. This one here. And yeah, that's straight through like that. It's going to be an ellipse on this side. But anyways, uh, uh, similar to the other one. We're going to have to graph that in 2D. All right, so going further. So note that we have to graph with Desmos 2D graphing calculator to, to obtain the 2D traces. Note also that I had to change Z to a Y for Desmos. This one, yeah, just pretend this is a Z because you can't just put a Z there in uh, Desmos because uh, it's 2D. So pretend that's a Z and it's going to look like this. And we'll show you what that shape is actually doing. So we go here, and I put, plug in M here. Oh, actually, we don't need M. Oh, we actually do a slider, that's cool. Yeah, so this shape like that, then until it gets to perfectly flat, because you're rotating that M. And then this is th this one, I think it goes, uh, it expands here. How does it go? Negative. Okay, yeah, there's a specific value you can't go, can't go beyond. So this is the most, and then goes like this, 2D, and then until it flips over to the other side. And that's again looking at it, looking at it from uh, here. It is just looking at it from from an angle like that. So that's what it's graphing, like directly head on, and so on. And has some other uh, issues there. Anyways, that's pretty epic stuff. So note also that changing the M value makes the vertical ellipses as one would see it looking horizontally at the Earth towards the equator. So looking directly at it. And then if you rotate that line, uh, you're going to have those ellipses uh, form accordingly.